dear students this is ninth biology video class this this week on thursday 5821 you are going to write first midterm test the syllabus for the first midterm test in biology is unit 17 animal kingdom unit 17 animal kingdom and unit 18 organization of tissues so these two chapters you are going to write first midterm test we'll see chapter 17 animal kingdom book back exercise 2 marks as well as 4 marks and 7 marks also we'll discuss now so this is the book back exercise define taxonomy define taxonomy so taxonomy is defined as the theoretical study of classification including its basis principles producers principles procedures and rules that is we call as a taxonomy now what is second question what is nematocyst what is nematocyst the members of the phylum cnidaria or cnidaria have tentacles so here the phylum cnidaria or cnidaria both are same they have tentacles tentacles means finger like structure that is we call as a tentacles bearing stinking cells they have stinking cells which are called as a nematocyst they are they have stinking cells they are since it has stinking cells they are called as a nematocyst the next question is why cell and traits are called diploplastic animals why cell and traits are called diploplastic animals due to the presence of two layers in the body wall the cell and traits are called as a diploplastic animals what are the two layers what are two layers ectoderm and endoderm so these are the two layers since the cell and traits have these two layers they are called as a diploblastic animals list the respiratory organs of amphibians you know what is amphibians okay they are, they are dual life they live in water as well as in land gills skin beak or pharynx and lungs are respiratory organs of amphibians just learn this as i read just you can learn now itself where it will be useful for your exams how does locomotion takes place in starfish sea stars move using a water vascular system starfish is kind of fish they present in sea with the help of water vascular system they can move here and there it is then circulated from stone canal to the ring canal and into the radial canal the radial canal carry water to ampulla and provide suction to the tube feet provide suction to the tube feet the next topic is the next question is the one or jellyfish and starfish similar to catfish give reasons no jellyfish and starfish are not similar to catfish because jellyfish moves by limbs or tentacles and starfish moves by tube feet starfish moves by tube feet but catfish moves by ray fin just underline this two word it's important one starfish moves by tube feet whereas cat fish can move by ray fins the next question is the one why 
are frogs said to be amphibians? Frogs are said to be amphibians because of because of their adaptations. Adaptations to live in aquatic. Aquatic means water and land environments. That is why it is called as a it is said to be amphibians. The next one. Next question is the one. Answer briefly. A four marks question can be possible. Okay, give account on Pylum and Elida. Give account on Pylum and Elida. Earthworms, leeches, and a group of marine worms are included in this Pylum. The name Anelida comes from Greek word. Annulations, which are ring-like structures, joined together. Okay, they have ring-like structures which are joined together. And they have a possessions of, of a body cavity called a celome. The next question, difference between flatworms and roundworms. Flat worms. Pylum platyhelminthus includes flat worms. Here the pylum platyhelminthus includes flat worms. Where else? Here the round worms, the pylum acilmenth compresses the round worms. Pylum acilmenthus comprises the round worms. Then flat worms, next point. It is a group of a soft bodied. It is a group of soft bodied. Usually much flattened invertebrates. Usually much flattened invertebrates. Whereas round worms, the body is narrow and pointed at both end. You know what narrow? Narrow means somewhat seems to be shorter, like, shorter like structure. And pointer both and means you know both sides will be pointer like structures. The next one in flat worm, alimentary canal is either absent or very simple. Alimentary canal means digestive canal. Here this round worm, alimentary canal is straight tube. Alimentary canal is straight tube. These worms are mostly hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites. Having both male and female reproductive organs in a single individuals. And here round worms, they reproduce sexually and the sexes are separate. Sexes are separate. So these are the difference between flat worms and round worms. And outline the flow charts of pylum chordata. Here chordata divides into um, pieces, amphibia, as well as ears, okay, and reptilia and mammalia. Then, next question is the one here. Yeah, this is one of the next questions. List five characteristic features of fishes. List five characteristic features of fishes. Okay, uh, fishes are. Five kilo thermic fishes are five kilo thermic aquatic vertebrates with jaws. Fishes are five kilo thermic aquatic vertebrates with jaws. So five kilo thermic means the animal they can change their body temperature and aquatic vertebrates with jaws. The body is streamlined. The body is streamlined. It is differentiated into head, trunk, and tail. It is differentiated with head, trunk, and tail. Locomotions of fishes is by pad and median fins. So, you know what I mean by locomotions? They move here and there. With help of that fin, that is because of locomotions. The body has covering of scales. The body muscles are arranged into segments called myotomes. Into segments called myotomes. 
respiration is performed by gills respiration what is respiration taking oxygen in and sending out carbon dioxide in human same thing here in fish whatever oxygen is there in the water that will be consumed by gills okay and as uh, so they say as a respiration is performed by gills the heart is two chambered with an auricle and a ventricle so these are the five characteristic features of fishes the next one comment on aquatic and terrestrial habits of amphibians aquatic habits of amphibians are their skin is naked moist and highly glandular skin is naked moist means wet and highly glandular they are highly secretions their respiration is affected by gills and skin when they are in water they breathe by skin when they are in water they breathe by gills and skins the fertilization is external which takes place in water which takes place in water and their early life is associated with water the early life is associated with water the next one is the one terrestrial habits of amphibians the respiration is affected by lungs the respiration is affected by lungs they are cold blooded animals that derive heat from outside generally amphibians are carnivorous and on land they feed on worms and insects the amphibians were first vertebrates to venture out on to land so these are the characteristic features of aquatic habits of amphibian and terrestrial habits of amphibians here in uh, respiration is affected by gills and skins when they are in aquatic habits when they are in the water they undergo for the gills and skin for respirations when they are in land they undergo for the lungs for respirations and how are the limbs of birds adapted for avian life how are the limbs of birds are adapted for avian life the limbs of the birds adapted for avian means birds avian life by modifications of four limbs as wings the second adaptations of birds for avian life is that the bones of both four limbs as well as hind limbs are filled with air filled with air that is why it is called as a pneumatic bones what is pneumatic bones the air which are filled in bones they are called as a pneumatic bones the next one is the one and the detail answer describe the characteristic features of prochordates with suitable diagrams here the characteristic features of different prochordates are subphylum acraniata as a prochordata the prochordata are considered as the forerunner of vertebrates since they are referred as a as a crania the classifications of the prochordates is based on the nature of notochord the phylum proto prochordata is classified into three subphyla namely hemichordata cephalochordata eurochordata subphylum hemichordata the hemichordata are marine organisms without backbones they are mostly remain as a tuberculous forms the body is soft vermiform and segmented bilaterally symmetrical and triploplastic the notochord persistent as a stomach stomachord is anterior regions of the animal example bal balanoglossus or you can say acorn worm and these are the diagram of that balanoglossus then subphylum of cephalochordata is a small fish like marine chordates with unpaired dorsal fins the persistence notochord the extends forward beyond the brain example amphiaxis this is the 
image of arm few axis the next one sub phylum eurocardates here this examples of fascidian eurocardates the notochord is confined to the tail regions of the larva the adults are mostly degenerates and are sessile sessile means attached sessile forms the body is enveloped by tunic exam or testis example ascidian then give account on phylum arthropoda phylum arthropoda organism with the jointed legs it's a arthropods means an ancient and largest phylum with a number of species it is estimated to have more than nine like species the word arthropods means jointed legs insects spiders crabs shrimps butterflies millipedes centipedes and scorpions are arthropods the body plan the body plane is distinct with the segmentations head thorax and abdomen the exoskeleton is made up of a polysaccharide called as a chitin the coelomic cavity is filled with the hemolymph the hemolymph circulates through the body cavity they do not have well defined blood vessels this is called as open circulatory system where in tissues and cells of the animal's body are uh, both directly in blood as the size of exoskeleton cannot exchange during growth the insects has to shed it periodically in the process called as a moulting so small arthropods directly absorb oxygen through the body surface many of the large aquatic species breathe through feather book gills and many land arthropods breathe through a system of tiny body tubules called tracheae excretion occurs through malpighian tubules in insects through the green glands in crabs so these are the detailed questions of book back exercise you can go through today we have seen all the book back exercise except one word just go through all these topics if you have any doubt you can contact your biology subject teacher okay bye take care